Hello guys, my name is Amit Sunny and I welcome you in this daily UPSC MCQ series Mission 2020 IAS and 8th June it is as I promised to you that I will upload the backlog uh, of videos so it is the English lesson of 8th June video and we are discussing in current affair questions importantly and the static portion is also uh, somewhat covered here because some uh, related issues we are taking here and some uh, demands are also there from your side as uh, regarding the NEFT and uh, the RTGS you asked me a question uh, that was a recent issue so they may ask you about some questions so it's totally a help for the UPS examination and uh, for other examinations also these issues will, will be the most important so we are uh, uh, trying to make it the best help as a great addition on a daily basis so let's start the lesson and uh, these are important pendrive courses by study IQ and very important help for the newcomers 60% off is also going on and you can ask uh, about all these courses by calling on these numbers and the Facebook group where I upload all these PDFs the telegrams channels link is also given here and uh, you can uh, join the telegram link or you can join the Facebook group there so you will get the PDF here now Delhi Metro Rail Corporation a lot of fuzz is there about the uh, DMRC and uh, as they propose to make it free for the women and the older age people and one more uh, additional uh, uh, highlighted current affair is there regard regarding the DMRC that it has got the waste to energy power okay so uh, Gazipur, is, Gazipur is the important area where all the trash all the garbage of the Delhi city that is collected and it's like a mountain of garbage there so there they have established this particular uh, waste to energy plant and this will be brought to the metro project of Delhi so in 2011 it had already got the certification by United Nations for the carbon credits as it is uh, uh, lessening the greenhouse gas emissions there so that's a kind of a great achievement already and now it's a thing now see oh, uh, sometimes we hear a concept regarding the carbon neutral concept it never happens that you will not release any kind of carbon in the environment always even if you are breathing you are releasing some carbon in the environment so it's a carbon footprint of yours but the issue with the carbon neutral uh, is that if you release the carbon if you uh, leave carbon in the outer atmosphere okay uh, means uh, out from your body then if you recycle that amount then you become the carbon neutral maybe if 100 units are uh, being added by me in the environment and if i'm recycling these 100 units back then it's a carbon neutral process so that is the case with companies that is the case with the, any individual or maybe any nation so here it is the case of carbon neutral and carbon credits it's a huge issue we will discuss that in some other uh, 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 lesson and uh, third one it's a PSU it's a government and center PSU because the 50% equities are there with the government of Delhi and 50% equities are there with the central government so it's not under government of uh, uh, India totally so first is wrong second is correct and third is again wrong because it is considered as a PSU so only two is the correct answer here and uh, you can see B is the answer DMRC becomes India's first project to receive power from waste to energy and it's the Gazipur plant and there this EDWPACL that is East Delhi Waste Processing Company Limited it had set up this particular waste to energy plant there and they are recy recycling the waste of Delhi and they are uh, uh, producing the energy from that so that's the recycling process means the waste that we had created here in this city of Delhi that we are recycling again so it would be a kind of a reduction in the waste in the environment there so that is the case and the government of delhi and east delhi municipal corporation is also there uh, in this establishment and metro is the eighth longest metro system in the world 16th largest by the ridership you see crores of people they ride it and it was set up jointly by the government of india and the government of delhi in may 1995 with the 50 percent equity with the uh, government of delhi and 50 percent equity with the central government there and uh, DMRC uh, as I told you certified by the United Nations in 2011 as the first metro rail and railway system in the world not even not even in India in the world to get carbon credits for reducing greenhouse gas emissions 
and reducing carbon emissions levels in the city by 6,30,000 tons every year. So that's an achievement. Next, Zarin Gold. Zarin Gold became famous as it was the first Russian train to Arctic region. So it's a German name and it means the Tsar of the Gold and uh, train to Arctic. This is, and you see some cities are there which are very much important geographically and they may ask you about that. So it is going from Russia to Norway and we all know about the world map. Russia is so huge and from Russia St. Petersburg, it will go to Norway and these countries, they are actually touching the Arctic region. Okay, and polar circle is going through these countries. So that is uh, very much important. You can see the train first tourist train taking 91 people on board and uh, uh, heading for Norway set off from St. Petersburg of Russia. You see, this is Murmansk city. That is the biggest city after the polar circle here. And the last important city that would be uh, the name uh, uh, is here with the Spitsbergen. Spitsbergen is here and it is there in the archipelago of Svalbard. Svalbard, Svalbard is uh, under the administrative authority of Norway. This is Norway country. You can see in the map, this is Norway. This is Sweden. This is Finland. And this is Norwegian Sea, Greenland Sea because Greenland Island is here. It's an island and after that, this is Canada. So this is Canada, this is Greenland, this is Russia. So uh, this is the Arctic uh, circle here and Arctic Ocean is located on the North Pole and the, the climate is changing very fast and this ice is melting very, very fast. So that is why this is a very important area and these cities would be very, very important. This Murmansk is in Russia and this, uh, this uh, particular uh, uh, city named uh, Spitsbergen, it is in Norway. So it's here, okay, and they both are about this polar cir circle towards the Arctic Ocean. So they both may be asked here. This Murmansk is the biggest city and it is the last city towards Arctic Circle. And Zaren Gold means the Tsar's gold in German. And that's very, very important. You can see Greenland here. Greenland comes under Denmark's authority. So that's very, very important. This is Iceland. Denmark Strait is there. Greenland Sea, Norwegian Sea and uh, it is it is uk here and uh, this is north sea here and this is norwegian sea and this is barren sea between norway and the uh, this particular uh, uh, svalbard uh, archipelago of this is the chain uh, the chain of the islands here okay so that is the case next question niti ayog follows top down approach replacing bottom appro approach this is just opposite this is not true this is wrong actually niti ayog was established and it used the bottom-up approach replacing the ever existing top-down approach in india which uh, was never useful and the lowest uh, ranks of the of the people and the administrative system in the grassroots level in villages in small towns the development never reached so they replaced this issue uh, with the bottom-up approach so niti Ayog is following that these uh, schemes are launched at the bottom level and the impact of it that would be observed on the top levels so first is wrong and second governing council is the top body of niti Ayog. that is perfectly correct and it includes all the chief ministers and the lieutenant governors not the governors lieutenant governors of the uts so that's important so second is correct and third chairperson is mr rajiv kumar that is wrong because chairperson is the pm of india mr modi is the chairperson mr rajiv kumar is continuing again as a vice chairperson of this body so that's important only to is the correct option here you can see recently it was reconstituted after the nda2 came uh, in power and you can see the composition of its chairperson prime minister governing council is the very important body cms and the left hand governance of the uts you see there are no chief ministers because chief ministers are there in just two uts delhi and puducherry so they are not coming here left hand governors are coming here and the governors of the normal states they are also not the part of it cms are the part of it and next regional councils are there and full full time members are there these three people are selected as the full time members vk saraswat professor ramesh chan and the vk paul and these are the ex officio members ex officio means suppose vice president is uh, our vice president and he is also the rajya sabha's chairperson so he is acting as a ex officio person as a rajya sabha's chairperson ex officio vice president 
so that is the case means he is sitting in some other office and he is uh, uh, taking charge here so these uh, defense minister home minister finance minister rural development and chandrajit minister they are, these are selected as the ex official members of the niti ayog so they may, may be asked so this was recently reconstituted next the first ever sdg gender index recently we had this uh, first ever sdg gender index and you see uh, this measures progress made in achieving gender commitment against internationally set targets and the sdg the goal which is to be completed in 2030 that is the most important one so india got this uh, rank of 95th out of 129 countries it's a very poor category and we have got this 95th uh, rank here and they are giving this rank on the basis of a score 1 to 100 100 means the best score one is the lowest score so india has got 56.2 uh, score here so it's under the uh, very poor category and uh, there are 43 nations in this particular category where india stands and it is not released by un women it is released by em 2030 equality measurement 2030 it's a civil society group so it is uh, giving all these data regarding this uh, sustainable development goals and the second is wrong first is correct only one is the correct answer here let's read about it global report harnessing the power of data for gender equality this is the theme and introducing the 2019 em 2030 gender index so em 2030 has collected this data not the un women so that's important and it says that uh, around 40% of the world's girls and women which are around 1.4 billion in number they are living in countries failing of gender uh, failing on gender equality standards means around 67 is the average score and india is below that uh, average score in uh, this world and uh, 1.4 billion girls or the women they are living in these those countries which are barely passing that mark so that's a very poor condition in this world you see overall score was 656.2 for india and it's a cumulative score average score for various uh, uh, indicators like in health we have got uh, 79.9 hunger 76.2 energy 71.8 these are the best scores uh, for india and some categories we have where we have performed the worst like in partnership 18.3 just 18.3 industry infrastructure innovation 38.1 and climate 43.4 so that is why we are uh, getting an average of 56.2 so that's a very poor category and uh, uh, in 51 indicators are there across 14 of the 17 official sustainable development goals means 17 official goals are there under sdgs we all we all know about that and uh, they are going to be completed by 2030 so this assessment is assessment is going on on the basis of that particular achievement and global average score is 65.7 uh, i'm sorry i said 67 it is 65.7 out of 100 and that means a poor category so for the world average it is a poor category and india is there for 56.2 that is very poor category denmark has topped this and uh, chad is there at 33.4 uh, score and 129th number and these are great countries always in most of the indexes and it is by equal measures 2030 this important uh, group has released this particular ranking here you can see 50 to 60 is the uh, orange one and india has got this particular category here 2019 first gendered uh, sustainable development goal gender index it's this equal measures 2030 is the independent civil society formed in 2016 and it's a joint effort of leading regional and global organizations and the civil society groups like the famnet that is the africa's one asia pacific's aro bill and melinda gates foundation and the cladem of uh, uh, latin, latin american countries and the international women health coalition iwch and all these other ones so they uh, combinedly are making this equal measures e on 2030 which is collecting this data and uh, the option second says about the un women UN women actually uh, has not released that gender index it is just a data UN women which is uh, also called as united nations entity for gender equality and empowerment for women so that's important it was established in january 2011 so that's important next global disability summit uh, it was not the first one it was actually the second one in 2019 the first happened in 2018 in london in uk this time it is the second one in 
uh, Argentina's capital that is Buenos Aires. So uh, this happened global disability summit and like we participated last year we are, we are again participating here in this summit and uh, India's uh, uh, social justice ministry and the minister Thawar and Gehloth is uh, attending this uh, particular summit and IDA as the most important body behind that that is organizing it with the help of these uh, governments or government of Argentina and all last year uh, it organized with the government of UK and all and uh, it's not a UN body this is wrong it's not a UN body and uh, it is working closely with the UN system and it has got a legal status there. So this is wrong and f uh, this is also wrong. D none is the answer here because uh, none of the statements are correct. It is the second global disability summit in Argentina's Buenos Aires. And IDA is actually organizing this as an international body with all these uh, governments where uh, it is being organized and global disability summit we are calling it. First one is in London in 18. So that's important and all these are important goals here civil societies are the important uh, ones and the ngos are the important ones here so idea works with these ngos and civil society groups and this is called international disability alliance created in 1999 and it's an umbrella, umbrella organization of uh, many other important uh, member organizations okay like organization is there for the deaf people organization is there for the uh, blind people so uh, there are organizations for the disabled people so it is the alliance of all these organizations so that's the most important one and it is actually uh, working on the principles of uh, united nations convention which is, which is a specially convention on the rights of the persons with a disability and we are hearing about it a lot and a lot of things are uh, taken as a step in india also in last two three years so that's important and it has got a legal status now since 2013 so ida is a legal body now okay next the issue that you asked me to explain here the difference between the neft and the rtgs recently rbi decided to scrap the charges which are which are taken on these transfers these are online fund transfer methods in india uh, you see we have other ones like digital wallets upis and all mainly they are for the payments and all but you can transfer funds also and the banks uh, are actually sending this uh, money with the NEFT, RTGS and IMPS system. IMPS was uh, uh, launched by NPCI, National Payment Corporation of India. And these two, and NEFT and RTGS, they were by RBI. So that's important. And RBI is now scrapping this money. Earlier, the charges were actually decided by banks only. Okay. And they depend on the, the amount of transaction and the, uh, the speed of the transaction. And actually, these banks were authorized by RBI only that do, you can take charges on that. And uh, um, different charges was uh, were, were taken by different banks. So it was the RBI as the issuing authority. Now RBI decides to scrap this uh, amount so that it can be appreciated. And there is a big advantage here. If this would be appreciated and no charges are taken, then maximum number of transactions would be there with the NEFT uh, and the RTGS methods. And the biggest advantage here is that these uh, these transactions, they can be tracked easily because all the data would be available. So any suspicious activity can be tracked here. So that is a great uh, move here. But alongside it, we have to take care about the cyber security also. Because when these online transactions are happening, then many, many cases are also there of the cyber frauds and people can be duped here. So that also government has to take care of. IMPS was the immediate mobile payment system that was introduced by NPCI. And you can read about them here. The, all the text is given here and uh, they, are taking, uh, they are explaining everything. The main issue with the NEFT and the RTGS is that RTGS is the real time gross settlement. And as you send the money, it will be reaching up to somebody's account. You only just need uh, need to have the basic account number, name and the IFSC code. As uh, we are sending money with the RTGS, NEFT and the uh, IMPS system, maybe the UPI system. So there also we need IFSC code and the account number there and the name. And RTGS sends it in the real time. But NEFT sends it in the batches. Means uh, uh, mainly it starts 9 in the evening and it uh, is there up to 7 p.m. So in these 10 hours, they will go for 11 batches. And uh, suppose I am SBI, somebody is PNB. I am sending 10 lakh rupees in one hour. And PNB sending to sending to SBI uh, uh, 6 lakh rupees. 
means the balance is 4 lakh rupees so i will pay 4 lakh rupees to pnb after one hour so this is how it is managed so it takes some time and they actually uh, accumulate these uh, charges in batches and they clear these batches because a lot of transactions are there so nef takes some time but rtjs is the real system real uh, uh, time gross settlement system so uh, in the nef system it is easy for the banks rtjs is somehow uh, difficult for the banks because this is the real time settlement so that is why rtjs has a minimum limit of 2 lakh rupees and there are there used to be charges but now there would be no charges nef is easy for the banks so uh even 1 rupee you can send to somebody and the maximum limit is not there in both the systems there is no maximum limit in neft or the rtgs so that is the main difference here and imps is the interbank fund transfer system that is the instant system and uh, these are important ones as i explained to you as these both are different in a way as i told you and neft goes with the batches and this system is called a deferred net settlement means it will wait for one or two hour or maybe for a particular time so maybe somebody is sending money uh, to me at a particular time but it will reach me after some hours so it may happen with neft but rtgs is instant it is at the real time so that is the difference here and about the charges as i told you they are scrapped now rbi has decided about that and uh, uh, these are the important conditions you can see rtgs is uh, immediate payment system imps is also immediate fund transfer this may take 1 to 2 hours and uh, there is uh, no uh, limit for the maximum maximum uh, transfer rtgs no limit but for imps there is a limit and uh, minimum transfer is rupee 1 here imps with rupee 1 but rtgs it must be at least 2 lakh rupees so that is the case here okay service timings are also uh, different imps is 24/7 system that is important and that is more customer centric imp is more customer centric that is the case so this is all for today and we will meet again tomorrow all the pdf we will get on the facebook uh, group and the telegram channel thanks a lot keep watching and please give the feedback thanks a lot